Action Comics 1050, Philip K. Johnson, Tom Taylor, and Joshua Williamson all writing mm-hmm. uh, with Mike Perkins, Nick Dragata, and Clayton Henry on the art. Um, yeah, I saw your tweet as I was eating uh, breakfast this morning, and I was like, oh boy. I, I like yeah. the cruelty, the cruelty of giving me a couple of pages of good art at the start and then shifting. It felt like, it felt like most of the issue was Clayton Henry to me, but I mean, I don't know if I'm yeah. just, maybe, maybe Dragata's art I, I'm not as familiar with. Maybe I just didn't notice the change to that, but, oh, I was noticing the big heads though <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> on Clayton Henry's art. I'll tell you that right now. The, the five heads. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's who drew, that's why I know that name. All right, so Nick Dragota was on East of West. So ah, okay, okay. That's why I know that name. So I just had to pull him up. So yeah, so I know what pages are theirs now. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, the Clayton, I, I'm not. I wasn't that as upset as you on the Clayton Henry art because there's some pages that look really, really good. It's all of the action stuff, but we always say that with Clayton Henry, right? That the action sequences tend to look a lot better than the, you know, the profiles. Of yeah, the, or, but you, you or the it. you know the the bust up. Wow. Yeah, but you give me a couple of Mike Perkins pages, which I, th- yeah. I mean, I think it was Mike Perkins at the start, a little, little yes. Perkins, uh, and I'm like, okay, there's a mood, there's an atmosphere, and then uh-huh. this ultra clean, big head yeah. style that it goes to. Does not match with Perkins whatsoever. There's zero no. complimenting to be done. So. No, absolutely. Uh, so it's mostly one story that I, I assume they collaborated on in the writing. And then yeah. there's like three epilogue endings that all kind of set up the three various books that we're getting coming out of this. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing in this is that Lex uses Manchester Black's powers and it kills Manchester Black seemingly. Um, and Manchester Black has a motor of defiance where he's like goading Lex by saying, hey, do you know what Superman says about you when he's on his own? Uh, and he's like, nothing. He doesn't even think about you. All these millions and trillions you've spent trying to defeat him and get under his skin. He doesn't even think about you. So I thought it was going to be like, yeah, that that Clark cares about you. He wants you to do well. But no, Manchester Black took the knife and twisted it because he knew he knew his time was up. So, yeah. you know, what can I say to Lex that's going to mess him up more than anything? And it's like, oh, yeah, he doesn't even think of you. <laughs> that was yeah. so brutal i loved it yeah and it, it, it was in character that's the thing even even though it may technically be true in the sense that superman yeah. never brought him up because he was too busy dealing with war world and all the yeah. other shit like the fact that manchester black would frame it this way because that's that fits his character more than yeah. it, this is more about manchester black's character than it is about superman's character yep. uh but anyway uh the big thing he does uh that we get revealed throughout the issue is that Lex, because I, I wasn't a fan when when they announced that we were going to be putting the, the can of worms, the lid was going to go back right. on, and everyone was going to like not know Clark was Superman anymore. Um, I was vocal at the time, saying that I, I thought it was a shame to sort of try and retcon that so soon. Mm-hmm. And while I still think overall that, I will say the idea that it wasn't Clark's choice and that Lex is taking this from yeah. him because he doesn't want the world to look at Clark and John as, as humans and as one of them. He wants them to see them as other. The fact that he's taking this back, uh, you know, by force, and, it all, you know, it gives Perry, like, a, a minor stroke. Uh, a stroke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, try, trying to deal with this. And it's even... The, the only thing I can compare this to, bizarrely, is, is something from the hit television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm-hmm. If anyone remembers season five of Buffy... Uh, the main villain, Glory, shares, like, a human body with a guy named Ben, but anyone who, like, witnesses the transformation or, like, knows about it, like, they just kind of, like, can't comprehend it, and they just, like, forget it, basically, instantly. And it's kind of set up later in this issue that that's kind of what's going to happen with, like, any footage of Clark being Superman that where it shows that he is both, because that exists now, because yeah. the secret's been out for a while. Um... They'll basically just, do, or even Westworlds and other comparisons, they'll just yeah. basically look at it and go, this doesn't mean anything to me. I don't understand yeah. this. No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of how, uh, that's how I think about, like, the fifth dimensional, like, their actual bodies. That's why they show up as imps, because mm. we can't comprehend them. Like, even in the arts, if you ever saw how, in a Morrison book, their true forms, it's always just this this mess of, like, letters and facial features and whatever because our brains aren't supposed to be able to comprehend them um and it was a nice layer because i i felt the same as you that like all right well i like that that superman and clark are the same person 
right? It gets rid of some of the silliness. But the reason that Lex did it was to make John and Clark both seem more alien to people because now they, they you know, they're not human. They're back to being the aliens. Um, it, it is quite dastardly, right? Like, um, and then the fact that Lex tries to spin it off that he was doing Clark a favor, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, you were, you're way more interesting when, when you have the Clark Kent persona, you know? Um, but yeah, man, the, whoever was writing the, the Lex in this really had it nailed. I don't know. Uh, from, from, the sound, the from the sounds of it, because there was interviews with the writers uh, okay. this past week, it sounds like they were all sort of collaborating and okay. like talking specifically about Lex and how to like, how, how can Lex win? Like, what, what can we do with Lex over these books to, to make him like, you know, still oh. the ultimate villain to Superman and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's, fu- it's funny because obviously there's the protective bubble over the uh the kents and they explain that most justice league members and teen titans and stuff all have like like they all, they all have built in like blocks for like any telepathic attacks from, so, yeah from martian manhunter like he's yeah. he's trained them so you know. so they all still remember and right. clark's family happened to be under the bubble so they all still remember right. but perry who comes over for for dinner obviously was outside the bubble when this actual like mm-hmm. you know wave hit everyone mm-hmm. so he immediately started to have this like attack when yeah. he couldn't compute that Clark was Superman, um, and there's some interesting details brought up that I, ca- I kind of like. I-, I do like Batman mm-hmm. saying to Clark, "Hey, you know, as much as you like this, you know, was it really fair that like Lois Lane was kind of reduced to just being Superman's wife?" Yeah. After this secret came out, and Clark kind of admits, like, you know, that was kind of an unforeseen effect of it. And I'm like, you know, that's yeah. a good point. Like, th- yeah, th- th- in the meta commentary, it's something I didn't really think of. Right, and that's kind of what it became. Is it was? Yeah. I mean, they still wrote Lois very strong. Like, I don't want to give like Tom Taylor or you know, because that's really the only place we got Lois, right? Yeah, but in, but ever you know. since the secret came out, she was basically mm-hmm. just writing a book about Superman, and right? St- st- you know, she 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 wasn't really being Lois and investigating stuff anymore. Right. And that's what I'm saying. So even in the meta context, it was something that I didn't think about. And then you, when I look back at it, I go, yeah, she kind of was just like. Clark, or Superman's wife in in Superboy's you know mom, and I was like, yeah, that isn't fair to Lois. Lois is a you know she can carry her own series, you know. So that was a and to have Batman point that out too. I thought that was pretty smart. Yeah, that was uh, that was good. Oh god, some of these heads. <laughs> I'm just as I'm looking through this. Oh god, I hate them. Anyway, uh, but then, then there's the other part of it, which is. Like, he's worried that John, because John's always had this open kind of, like, secret, he's never really mm-hmm. had the secret identity, at least from, a, you know, a relative age. Yeah. Um, but then you see John, like, immediately seems to be kind of liking that no one knows who yeah. he is. And it's, like, if anything, being constantly out in the open before yeah. has been this kind of pressure that he didn't even realize he had until it's been lifted. And now it's yeah. like, hey, I can just, you know, go into a, a store and get, get a drink yeah. and no one will recognize me. And mm-hmm. it's kind of freeing in a weird way. So... Uh, you know, you, you've got all this kind of stuff at play, but ultimately this is Lex doing this, uh, and mm-hmm. Superman, like, goes and deals with Lex, and obviously brings him in, and Lex is like, you know, I have to admit, you know, between everything going on with Dark Crisis, and, like, you've been away from War World, it, it became clear, mm-hmm. no, the world does need a Superman, I hate to admit it, but mm-hmm. it can be my Superman, it can be, like, let me fix you. I'll make you the best of my ever. Yeah, that was the other thing. Where I was like, Lex, what are you on, bud? <laughs> in, in what world was this gonna work? You, he's gonna be Lex Corp Superman? Like, there's no way. Yeah, not um, a chance. So, yeah. I mean, Superman just just like t- takes his purple and green robot like mech mm-hmm. suit ass up to the moon, uh, where he can't harm it because you know because Lex immediately right. starts endangering civilians and right. Superman's like, I'm not having this. We're going to the moon where I can have a proper conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, no, you're not doing this. And, you know, it's, it's a big sequence, you know, there's this punching in the moon and stuff. He ends up, like, punching the, the, the mech suit. Uh, we still got his space suit underneath, so he's not, like, in danger. Yeah. But he punches the mech suit away, uh, mm-hmm. so it's all gone. It does reveal that Superman's got a bit of a new ability, uh, where he can kind of just traverse, like, large distances in space, like it's nothing. Yeah. So I feel like though they were going back to the kind of golden age thing where he was mm-hmm. like, "Look, I am Superman. I can do anything. I I keep my stuff down for the benefit of everybody else. Don't mess with me." So I I did like that because that was Stern Clark. Like 
He didn't threaten Lex, but he was like, don't, don't test me. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm cool with the, 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 the threat, as it were, uh, if you yeah. want to call it that. I, I don't necessarily, like, whenever anyone tries to add to Superman's power set, I tend not to like it very much because mm -hmm. I think one of the things with having such a powerful being is there should still be firm rules so that we can understand mm -hmm. when there's a danger to him and understand, like, like, as long as you have a set of rules and you adhere to them, I don't think it's too big. Yeah. I don't think he's too yeah. powerful. But when you keep adding on more power th powers and you keep sort of saying, now he can do this and he can, you know, because he basically says here that time and space basically yeah. don't apply to me anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. don't, don't, that's, too, that's too much. That's, that's a bit too no, far. No, it is. But, but again, and again, talking about the meta narrative here, it's, it's again, it's these writers going back to the golden age of Superman and that like, you know, this man could used to be able to move planets and stuff, right? In the mm. comics. And it's just like, well, yeah, he never could stop. He just never flexed that much. And here, when there's this big threat from Lex, you know, this is where he'll use that. Because I don't, I don't even know how far Lex had teleported him to. But, you know, Lex had thought like, oh, he's out of my hair now. And he turns back around and Clark's right there. Different star so, system by the sounds of it. Yeah. And so I just like, again, the flex from Clark there. It was like, look, man, I don't like to have to go to that level. And I don't for everyone else's benefit. So please don't push me. Um, and again, yeah, I was stern dad mode. And, and that's how I kind of like Angry Superman. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so we get like three kind of final pages or final scenes mm -hmm. that kind of set up the three books coming out of it. Um, one's for Superman, which I'll be honest, the art here was so like suggestive or so yeah. not suggestive. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, Lex's head looks so weird that I didn't even realize yeah. this was meant to be Lex until yeah. I like I was like, who's this? They're who's this villain they're teasing in the Shrikers Island? And I'm like, oh no, this is yeah. just Lex in a prison cell. Um, yeah. I don't know, the head. I was thinking this might be like is it in Simon or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> like because his head was drawn so big and bulging. And I don't know, but anyway, bulbous. So it's teasing Lex for for Superman issue one. Uh, it says to be continued there. So that's what Williamson's going to be leading off with, mm -hmm. and then the tease for. This, you know, John's book that Taylor's doing is that someone's going to ruin the multiverse killing different Clark Kents. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> you know, that reveal, that reveal uh, with the page turn. Yeah. Like, I knew who it was going to be, but I wasn't ready. So you, you turn it and it's Val Zod, mm -hmm. who Tom Taylor created. Like, such such a nice touch. Yeah, so he, he's the one investigating this and mm -hmm. they're going to come to John for help because he's not a Clark. Uh, so that's very interesting. That sets up that book, and then the action setup, which has been kind of been teased for a while, is the, the yeah. Metallo stuff. Uh, but you, you get this like next part of it, which is that Lex via hologram uh, is like there to greet Metallo as he's waking up, and they've given him a very human-looking body where he can feel and taste and smell again. He has a bit of a green glow and a little bit of like metal coming out of his chest, but for the most part, yeah. he looks human again. So he's given yeah. him like a physical form that feels human, um, which yeah, of course comes with a price as it always does with Lex. But uh, yeah. I just feel like like John's not going to play ball. I don't. I don't feel like Corbin's going to play ball with oh, Lex sure. here, right? And so um, I like this. I like Android Metello. Like it's always cool when they make him like this monstrosity, kind of how he was. But I like kind of when he can blend in with everybody, and it's just a Kryptonite heart. It kind of glows. Mm -hmm. um, so this with the T, where it almost looks like he had like a um, like an autopsy. It kind of gives us like this macabre, you know, figure to it to yeah. uh, Metallo. I really, really like that. So, um, but yeah, man, um, I like the way that that reveal happened because it was all through that first person. You know, we hear them which talking is, about him. Which to compare it to other cyborg mm -hmm. stuff, it's very Robocop mm -hmm. to like have yeah. him wake up in first person. Yeah. And hearing them talk about what they've done to him and then see the reveal of what he actually looks like. Yeah. Uh, you know, and given what Lex did, you know, by threatening his, his sister and, like, right. framing her for a crime and stuff, mm -hmm. like, I suspect that Metallo will feel forced into helping him for a while, but yeah. maybe he'll get, like, a, a moment of defiance later on. He'll, he'll get to rebel against Lex and that'll be kind of yeah. a fun, uplifting moment, I'd expect. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah. No, you know, I think the art in this, obviously, is very wonky. I hate the Clayton mm -hmm. art with a passion. 
But <laughs> uh, I do like what it sets up for the status quo of Superman going forward. I think Lex feels really villainous by taking this, like, yeah, you know, like this idea that taking back the secret is actually something that will hurt Clark and his family, and the way that Lex, or you know, in Lex's warped mind, is yeah. really is really villainous. And I really like that for him as a villain. Um, I also really like setting up Metallo for the for the action comic stuff, and mm-hmm. I like the plot to set up for the the super. I, I, he might say Superboy because it's John, but it's not. You know yeah, what I mean? uh, it's the other Superman. But you know, setting up that for that book, I also really like. Yeah. So I like everything that's set up for going mm-hmm. forward. Yeah, I was gonna say the the uh, making John and Clark seem less human to everyone. That also fits in with the Red Sin story, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from yeah. from that motivation. So I like that it it threads that needle fairly well too. So it seems to be that's what the status quo of the villains wanting to do with Superman is like, let's remind people that he's an alien, you know, um, so people don't trust him. Um, and again, I like having villainous Lex back. Like we had that kind of tweener Lex for a while that was like, you know, even when he was doing stuff with Perpetua, there was a sense of he's trying to make things better. Now it's just basically to like, I hate Superman for reminding me that I'm not, or for reminding me that I'm just human. Um, we're back to that petty Lex and man, do I love a petty Lex? So I think we're in a good spot with Superman going forward. <clears throat> yeah. It feels like an actual later comics again, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool. So, uh, very good. What do you give an action comics? 1050. Oof. If the art was a bit stronger, I, I, I would go just a, a scotch higher, but I'm going to give this an 8.5. Yeah. I think I need to go with like, uh, Hmm. I'm gonna go with seven point five. Okay. Because they are. <laughs> yeah. Like they... I, I had forgot about the bulbous head Lex until you had brought it up. Oh. I tried to put it out of my brain. Because yeah. Um... I I legitimately got confused at who I was looking at yeah. because the art made it look like it was like it was so Someone bulbous knew. that I was thinking, yeah. oh, is this some sort of uh, other character? Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's, it's who's this mutant? Yeah, it's just Lex. <laughs> yeah. It's just Lex with a badly drawn head. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm so I'm just gonna go seven point five. But I do like everything that's set up for the super lane going forward, which is nice. Uh, it's just just the same shame that Clayton Henry, uh, I think, is on one of the books. <laughs> <laughs>